uh, connection problem, but now we are back and we are in episode number five of Dropshipping News Live. And uh, today we have a couple of topics with, uh, for you and uh, one main topic that uh, Maor is a big expert on and we'll talk about it a bit later. But before that, we'll wait a little bit for uh, more people to join in and uh, we'll start really, really soon. Again, as always, if there's any question you have, let us know and uh, we'll mention that. Also, uh, if uh, there's a problem with uh, the uh, m microphone or stuff like that, let us know. Last time it was really good, so I think today we'll also have a very good time. Yeah, yeah so I think that uh, last time we covered the very good topics uh, and we got... I think uh, after the the session, uh, I've received a lot of messages from from you guys uh, saying that it, that it was a very great uh, session of dropshipping news. Yeah. So again, I want to encourage you guys if you have questions, if you have topics that you want us to uh, discuss, speak about, uh, we can do it uh, pretty much live and we improvise as we go. So feel free to ask us any question. We are here. Uh, to help you with uh, with anything, uh, but we randomly choose uh, more or less like the news uh, topics usually. But if you have something that you want us in specific to discuss about, then feel free. Uh, we we will always try to help you guys. Exactly. So maybe we can start already with a couple of things. Yeah. Um, so there's one thing that I thought about that I uh, heard, as you probably know, guys, there was the Prime Day re recently. Actually, it was two days and uh, there was some interesting stuff there. Once, one thing is uh, something that Maor pointed out. Uh, you remember you made a comment on my uh, Prime yeah. crash sale thing. So do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, so as you know, eBay uh, tried to, to ride on, uh, on an issue that happened uh, last year actually so uh, Amazon last year was uh, crashing because uh, the because of the amount of orders and the visitors on their websites and it was uh, I think two hours of an outage with the uh, with the Amazon website which cost Amazon uh, millions of dollars but anyway uh, um, eBay made the fun of it and, and and they posted when they crashes we are here and what actually happened is actually they crashed and uh, you've seen the message it's like, it's not us it's you uh, <laughs> yeah so uh, I think that was uh, th th this is a lesson to, to be learned yeah and it goes to say that there's so much correlation that uh, when uh, Amazon has some uh, crazy event like uh, Prime Day uh, obviously people are searching in uh, eBay also for bargains because if they see something good in Amazon they say okay maybe in eBay I can find so something even better and so eBay probably kind of expected that but then again not really because they uh, crashed and it's funny that crash Am Amazon Prime Day and then eBay themselves crashed so it's a little bit of uh, self uh, humor there um, another thing regarding Prime Day which happened that I noticed is that um, uh, there were uh, several very high ticket products like I'm talking thousands of dollars even more than ten thousand dollars particularly in the uh, photo uh, uh, subcategory that uh, by mistake uh, Amazon priced at uh, less than a hundred dollars for a few minutes and some bargain catchers people and people who have uh, their eyes on that stuff like bought hundreds of those for like a very very uh, low price and Amazon had to honor this price because that's what they displayed there and they actually shipped that so imagine like people buying some uh, very very expensive um, uh, how do you call it lens f instead of like ten thousand dollars for just ninety four dollars it's wow. crazy wow. and as something uh, just as an idea for stuff like that there are plenty of uh, software and plugins that you can use that can give you a price or a significant price change alerts and then you can say oh okay I wanted this product either for myself or to sell to others or maybe to uh, buy a hundred and then sell them uh, it can give you uh, those alerts so you can uh, you know sniper those items and then buy them at a very very low price that probably won't uh, come again very soon 
Yeah, I think that it's very common along the years uh, for a lot of softwares to actually do what uh, people call as auction snipers yeah. or, uh, or listing snipers. That's, that's a software that actually snipes the, the best pricing uh, items um, that are selling uh, across the, the marketplaces. So you can just go ahead and Google uh, snipers and, and just learn exactly what they are sniping in and you can probably find some bargains. But this is something uh, to be explored by you guys. Uh, this is just uh, voluntarily, let's say, uh, information. Yeah. Uh, by the way, there's one plugin called uh, Camel, Camel, Camel. You probably heard heard of it. Uh, it's uh, it, uh, it can give you price alerts and also keep. A, there's a version there that can give you price alerts as well. So that's about that. Um, okay. What else? Uh, there's one thing that uh, I just mentioned to you earlier that we found out that. Uh, in India, and we talked a little bit with, uh, with more regarding uh, opportunities in India, and we'll talk about it a bit later, but one of them is that eBay just a few days ago decided to um, partner with a company called Paytm Mall. I don't know if you guys know about it, but turns out that in India it's like a very, very big online retailer, and this is where uh, people in India go to buy. So what happens is now eBay will also offer your listings, those that are eligible for like uh, for uh, people from India on that site, on Paytm. And they also have their own kind of logistics. I think it's a little bit similar to eBay's uh, global shipping program that Paytm Mall has. And then you could kind of also offer your products there and they will do the logistics to send it to people in India. So that's uh, one opportunity. You maybe want to explore that. And uh, uh, more, you talked a little bit also about other stuff on India. So can you explore that? Yeah. So first of all, I just want to say that uh, eBay understand that they cannot probably compete with Amazon uh, in, in marketplaces such as uh, United States or United Kingdom. So they are trying to explore different continents or different places such as uh, India. By the way, uh, I know I know that uh, also Walmart is exploring this stuff, mm. and they are also trying to find out places where they can uh, collaborate uh, even together uh, in order to beat Amazon as 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 what uh, they call Amazon the bully, Amazon the the cartel of uh, of uh, marketplaces. So I can tell you guys that uh, they are doing that as well. Even they are collaborating uh, together. So uh, I have to say that uh, I have a few insights for you guys. So I've actually dealt with uh, Amazon uh, dropshipping in India. Um, I think it was uh, six years ago. It was very challenging because uh, in those days you, you had to have uh, something that is called a Paisa Pay. Paisa Pay is like a PayPal only in India. Uh, the pricing is different and uh, the way that they are uh, acquiring the the credit cards are different, and of course the fees and everything. But uh, what you have, but what you need to, to have is uh, some local partner. At least in those days. Today, I think it's more open and, and it's uh, progressing uh, very well. But uh, uh, I have to say that uh, this is a very uh, interesting place to maybe start your ways uh, on dropshipping or in e-commerce in general. So I have to say that first. India is like uh, awaking to the world. That means that uh, uh, things are, are starting to, to grow very fast over there. And last time I have to say that, uh, that uh, actually that, uh, that, that uh, there are many um, uh, vendors that are starting to promote their items if until today people that was uh, doing private label on Amazon, they used to go into uh, China or trying to find some supplier in Alibaba or stuff like that. Now uh, uh, India is becoming like a, a very good competitor and we can see that more and more and I can tell you that uh, probably in the next uh, three or four years, that's, that's at least my estimation, I believe that many people will start uh, producing items on uh, India and this is very uh, interesting for us as uh, dropshippers because it's probably a good place uh, to start exploring or at least uh, to learn. 
and, mm-hmm. and to try to find uh, maybe a better competitor than China. Yeah, and I think one big thing there is uh, print on demand. Uh, for example, if now the options were either choosing an expensive uh, US uh, uh, source for that or, or someone uh, cheaper in China but the quality is not uh, very good and the shipping times may be uh, very slow. Uh, with India, as far as I heard, I'm not an expert on that, but the uh, vendors there or those who offer uh, print-on-demand services are becoming much, much higher and, uh, quality and much uh, as, uh, faster uh, shipping and many, many other uh, like uh, shipping and delivery options and also the variety of products. Uh, becomes more for example you know if it was just shirts and then mugs and uh, now you can have like full sets of uh, bedding for example we had uh, a little bit more than a month ago a webinar with uh, david popovich who is an expert in uh, um, in um, uh, well what would you call it uh, private branding. label branding private yeah branding label. and private labeling and uh, he actually i i, I don't think he's uh, sourcing that from uh, India, but uh, he does the bedding sets and big, big things. And these things are now available at a uh, good quality also uh, from India. So that's uh, also something to explore. And thinking about it, that's it's India is, I think, the second largest country in terms of population in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no. uh, and, you know, there's so much now that there uh, really, as Maur said, waking up uh, to the technologies and they have now PayPal available. I'm sure that I, when I did India dropshipping, I use it with PayPal. So now I'm sure that they still support that. So it's something that you should definitely explore. I never heard of like big dropshipping communities in India as we do, like Amazon to eBay dropshipping. Yeah, well, the communities is like uh, is just now starting to to arise to the world of dropshipping because I think one of the of the biggest uh, challenges that uh, guys from India has is of course their first funding. Mm-hmm. So even though it's not a lot of money in order to get into the dropshipping business it's still uh, it's still an obstacle and I can tell you that uh, once this this is something that it will be solved yeah. then probably we will see more and more people from India uh, coming to the world of dropshipping that means uh, probably uh, um, I think in in the good way uh, more opportunities in the bad way probably more competition yes yeah but as always, you can use other services as well to help you with that, like Payoneer, for example, if you need conversions and stuff like that, and using the other currencies. So I think uh, there's a lot of solutions also available. Yeah, I, I know that Payoneer is actually is doing like a, a very big convention actually next week on, on India. So this is, uh, this is interesting to, to, to learn what they have to say regarding this uh, conference uh, in India. Perfect. Okay, we have a quick question here. What do you say? Maybe we answer that, or uh, do we yeah, yeah, let's let's go explore some questions. Okay, so uh, Nuradin asks: Should we use Blue Care Express for all the tracking numbers, or just uh, for Amazon logistics? Well, I think that uh, only for Amazon logistics, it doesn't make sense to just uh, convert other um, um, other uh, tracking numbers that are valid. And can be validated by eBay, uh, so it's it's a waste of money to to just do it on all tracking numbers. I know that uh, many people is uh, thinking about uh, using Blucher for all of the uh, tracking numbers in terms of uh, the item locations and the way that uh, you track the package. So there is a let's say a, I'm not sure if it's a myth or it's something that is uh, realistic. Uh, but people uh, say, uh, well, uh, eBay has the option to check exactly where is the item location. So let's say that I chose Miami as my uh, my item location, and now I'm shipping the item from I don't know, um, let's say New York. So what will actually happen? Um, I'm like cheating the system by saying the item is located in Miami, but actually I have no control on that. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm using Blucher Express, of course, this could be something that can be helpful because this way I can make sure that the item will look as something that I've uh, sent from uh, Miami or stuff like that. And I know that people are exploring that and this is very interesting actually 
But actually, I have to say that I don't see yet a point to do that, at least for all orders, as long as Bluecare uh, is charging for any tracking number that is being uh, replaced. Mm -hmm. So don't go to the full solution just yet. Uh, if if you are asking what uh, my opinion is, is so at least uh, for me, I believe that uh, currently uh, we should only change the AMZL uh, tracking numbers. Mm -hmm. That's actually a good question. I don't think anybody knows uh, the answer to whether it really um, affects uh, what eBay sees you as. So do, because in uh, Blue Care Express, I don't think you see where the item is coming from, or do you? I'm I'm not sure exactly because I didn't change uh, like items that I've seen um, that are mm -hmm. not the uh, Amazon logistics. Yeah. But I know that you can actually uh, choose like the uh, at least uh, this is my understanding regarding this is that you can actually choose the the proper location and and this way you can avoid issues of uh, being like people believe that they can be flagged if they are not changing the uh, the, yeah. the tracking numbers and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so that's uh, the jury is still out. Uh, we have to see uh, what uh, what happens with that. But uh, yeah, let's explore. Let's see. Maybe people can share their experiences also here. Uh, Musi asks, is there any news about Amazon Prime buyer account? Well, um, I think that the, the good news is that the Prime Day is over and we see less and less issues with the Amazon accounts that are being closed. So I'm guessing that this uh, reflects as good news for you guys. That means that uh, less and less Amazon accounts is being uh, blocked by Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, it has a, for sure now I'm, I'm very set and if... if if before uh, one week ago uh, I've said that probably uh, this is one of the issues why Amazon closed so many accounts, now I can assure you guys that this is probably was the 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 real reason. So the real reason was, of course, the Prime Day. So Amazon uh, really uh, was, I think, afraid that uh, it will happen again and they will crash on Prime Day, and that means for them a pure loss of money. So they uh, went a month ago and started to clean up and just closed so many accounts. Yeah. So I'm not sure uh, if it won't happen again in uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday, but at least it looks like uh, things started to get more cooler. So yeah. I'm guessing that uh, it means that we are uh, safer or more safer now. Yeah, also uh, one uh, thing that I see more and more how important it is, is to keep uh, the same browser with the same cookies information and uh, browsing history and not jump from one to another, from one IP to another, because this really yeah. freaks the system out. This really uh, one of the surest ways to get your account closed or Amazon raising questions. Uh, what is this account? What is the um, uh, associated uh, credit card? And uh, is it connected to the buyer, to the owner of the account and is he the actual buyer stuff like that so that's about that yeah of course amazon has a lot of issues when they see probably um, a purchases that coming from one ip and then customer support that comes from uh, different ips that mm -hmm. usually happens uh, when doing auto purchasing yeah, like or when you I'm, log in and the robot logins. Yeah, or if I'm jumping between uh, IPs because I'm using maybe multiple uh, IP addresses to use the same or to open the same um, um, account, which used to work very perfectly just a few uh, weeks or months ago, and, mm -hmm. and now it looks a little bit different. But anyway, um, time will tell. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now how about we talk about the main topic uh, which uh, you wanted to present, uh, which is the seller dashboard. Yeah. Okay. So uh, seller dashboard for you guys that don't know, it's of course the dashboard that actually ranks your activity on, on eBay. Uh, and seller dashboard is been changing a lot along the years. I can tell you that every time every year they change it they change the parameters they uh, do all kinds of optimization sometimes it's for good sometimes it's for worst i can tell you for example 
that uh, 2015 was probably like the worst year of uh, sellers, uh, I think, in the world uh, of dropshipping. Because uh, actually what eBay did in those days, uh, what they, uh, they did, they also added into the seller dashboard a parameter that actually uh, takes like how many negative feedbacks you received as a defect. Now, this actually affected so badly on sellers that most of the sellers lost their top rated seller. And worse than that, most of the sellers actually went into below standard. But uh, those days are over and today we have new uh, parameters, so let's speak about them uh, in, in a few words. So if I'm going to my account and I'm going to the seller dashboard, then of course I can see my rank. I can see my actual rank currently and I can see like the, the expected one that uh, should be in the next evaluation. Forecast. The yeah. forecast, yeah. So. Um, there are a few uh, standards that I'm uh, supposed to be uh, in. So the first one is that I'm above standard. This is like the, the default one. That means that I'm doing actually things very good, uh, but not performing like uh, I'm not excelling like with all the parameters. But that means that I'm still in the good rate of things and that means that I'm still doing my job. Now. There is uh, another rank which is called below standard. That means that I'm I'm not doing my job well. That means that I'm uh, actually underperforming with all the parameters, mm -hmm. and that means that eBay will probably put me as a below standard. And there is a lot of consequences to that. That means that I will probably uh, lose exposure. Uh, that means that uh, my account will be at risk. It's and a very bad place to be in. Yeah. It's like not profitable at all. Yeah, and it's very hard to actually overcome it. Like uh, to get out of, of, uh, of being in this situation is actually very hard. Yeah. So, uh, and the best thing, of course, is to be a top rated seller, which is currently very hard to be, a place to be in uh, because of uh, eBay parameters. So actually eBay asks us, uh, to excel in all uh, parameters that they uh, uh, put as as, uh, as as marks to to us, and we need to excel on all of them. That mm -hmm. means that we need to make sure that we have our cases closed without seller resolution, which is, I think, like one of the uh, topest uh, issues why people are actually uh, losing the. Uh, the above standard or the top rated and starting to get below standard. So in terms of that, you have, I have to say that uh, they have a very strict uh, measurement on how they measure this parameter. So first of all, um, what they uh, do, they see all the cases that, uh, that you didn't provide the proper solution. It doesn't mean that you didn't, like if you didn't answer at all to a case, that means, and the case was closed, that means that the, clo the case closed without seller resolution. But not just that, more than that, if you actually didn't provide it like uh, uh, any solution in the case, even if you responded, and even if you tried to close the case, and the case was closed against you, that means that still it will be a case that closed without seller resolution, yeah. and they have 0 30 percent out of the cases in comparison to the number of transactions that you that you made mm -hmm. and i think that uh, you can probably lose uh many i i, I think that you can uh, exceed this uh, parameter very uh, i think uh, shortly or uh, very easily mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, of how strict this parameter can be mm -hmm. Yeah, also I just wanted to say that in many cases, uh, and this is something that's hard to expect, the buyer contacts eBay on their behalf before you can even have any control, any chance to respond. Uh, even if you're like uh, in communication with them and you accepted, let's say, a return process, stuff like that, still the buyer can contact eBay without you knowing that and then eBay will very quickly uh, deal with the case. And if they deem you... Uh, irresponsible or that you didn't provide exactly the solution that the uh, buyer expected, 
they will also mark that as something that you didn't solve. And this is, uh, again, affects this little, a uh, very, very sensitive parameter of 0.3% of your transactions, which is very, very little amount. So, yeah. Important. So it, it could be even three cases just to become uh, as below, standard. below standard. And yeah. the problem is, is that since you are starting to lose exposure, that means that you are selling less and less and less and less. And that means that probably it will be harder for you guys in the next forecast to mm -hmm. become above standard again. But mm -hmm. the takeaway from, uh, I think, the things that you should take from uh, uh, what we are just trying to explain is that to always, always try to appeal the cases and always try to negotiate or try to see if you can resolve or remove the case. Mm -hmm. Even if you need to call eBay explaining stuff, so I have to say that most of the cases are actually being closed during the weekends because then people becoming like uh, uh, more available and, uh, and, and, and less uh, patient and they usually escalate the, the case and mm -hmm. then the case is closed against you even without you trying to protect yourself or trying to defend, defend yourself uh, uh, along the case. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that the biggest takeaway from, from, from this is what you should do is to always try to appeal uh, and lately I, 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 I even know that uh, uh, me and Eagle we discussed about it and Eagle appealed one of the cases in, in one of uh, our accounts and we actually won and this saved us uh, from becoming a below standard on, on one of our main accounts which we didn't notice that uh, three cases was closed without seller resolution and we, we actually won this case and, and, and we, we got back into the, uh, to the right path. Yeah, and it can be very sneaky because you're sure that here I, I provided the, the solution, why is it closed against me? And only when you see that uh, you're about to go below standard, it's like, oh, uh, they, they didn't count it as that. And it's something to solve it, as Mauer said, is very easy. It's as easy as sending them an email or calling them and explaining what happened. Now, what you can do, for example, if eBay intervened, and solved it instead of you is tell them that uh, come on guys uh, the the buyer contacted you and uh, just within a few hours you gave them the response without giving me a chance to respond because you know sometimes you have to sleep sometimes you're not on your computer you have to have this reasonable time of let's say 24 hours to see what the customer wants to change or do and then a chance to respond usually like i, I don't remember uh, a case where when I explained that and I truly gave what I have to give as a seller who tries to resolve something, I never had a case where they said, uh, no, this cap is kept as is. They yeah. uh, went uh, um, towards me and made this case in my favor. So really talk with them and uh, state your points and they will be good with that. Yeah, so just to sum up everything that we just uh, talked regarding cases closed without seller resolution, uh, first of all, if you are selling less expensive items, like uh, if the it means that uh, even if you will lose a few dollars, ten, fifteen dollars, it's worth it because losing the exposure will probably cost you more money yeah. and, and and more painful, uh, I think, uh, and expensive time. So think about it and try to always uh, be on top of all cases. Try to uh, figure out exactly how we can solve things. And second of all, if, if you had an issue where uh, they provided like a case that was closed without seller resolution, then always try to appeal that and try to f fix yeah. uh, things. Mm -hmm. Now, m more parameters on the seller dashboard is of course everything that uh, is related uh, to um, um, tracking number that are not being uploaded uh, with time or, uh, or late shipments. So guys, uh, I think that we discussed a lot and, and I think that we even did a video regarding that. But anyway, everything that is related to business policies or the time where you need to upload your tracking number, try to be on top of it no matter what. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot be on top of it, that means that you need to change your policy you need to extend the, the number of days 
that you are doing uh, as a handling time because it just doesn't work to be in a place where you, you can probably, uh, I don't know, uh, not excel with your parameters and I can tell you these parameters, if you, if you excel on all of them, there is no reason uh, why eBay will ever flag uh, your account and I think that this is uh, like one of the toppest uh, thing that you should uh, you should save from this. Yeah, and uh, the good thing is also is that you can be top rated seller. It's possible as a dropshipper. Um, yeah. There was some time that eBay changed their um, requirements for tracking number for validated the tracking numbers to be at a certain point. It was ninety percent. Now it's ninety five. But there, in this time, there you know people could not be as dropshippers from Amazon become top rated because some of these numbers were not trackable because they're Amazon logistics. And now we have solutions for that and we discussed that. So there yeah. is an option for that. Um, okay, how about we uh, answer some questions? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. So, um, what do you think about uh, dropshipping from AliExpress? So do you want to answer that? Okay, yeah, I can answer that. So first of all, uh, you should really watch our uh, webinar. As, as you notice, we have a lot of webinars for a lot of things and uh, I'm happy that uh, that's the case. And uh, as always, for free. <laughs> for free, yes, as the name of the group suggests. So uh, we did a webinar with uh, Leon, Leon Diroktovich, which is also a good friend of mine. And he explained exactly how to do dropshipping from AliExpress. Uh, how to find good sellers that uh, give you good shipping and good products and you can see their track record. Also how to find items that uh, nobody else really uh, sees but uh, you can see that there's opportunity for that. Uh, what do I think or what more uh, thinks about it personally? Well that really depends, it really is your business choice. What are you going to focus on? Some people focus on AliExpress and really succeed. I know people who make thousands and thousands of dollars in profit easily from AliExpress. And I know people that uh, tried AliExpress, hated it, and then went to Amazon or to Target or to Walmart and made bank, like really a lot of uh, money. Uh, I think it's easier uh, to scale with uh, Amazon because it's kind of, you know, there's a very, very clear way, clear path that you can really make a lot of accounts and automate the process and, you know, hire v virtual assistants to do that for you. Uh, with AliExpress, there's a lot of variety, a lot of uh, things that you can do because also you can find their people or suppliers that will be uh, able to offer you things that nobody else sees. So you kind of can open, like uh, create a relationship with uh, there with the suppliers. It's uh, uh, also interesting. But again, uh, I think for sure there is money in uh, to be made in AliExpress, a lot of money, and a lot of money to do also with Amazon, Target, Walmart, and so on. It's just your choice, your business choice, what you're going to focus. So. Yeah, yep. so I am uh, personally think that uh, dropshipping from AliExpress for sure can be profitable. Uh, it needs, needs a very certain uh, type of expertise. That means that uh, if you are going to deal with AliExpress, you should probably know exactly how to deal with customer support and exactly how to, uh, uh, I think, to point the way that uh, your eBay policy looks like. So I think that uh, it's very important to do a very good market research if you are uh, choosing the items from AliExpress and don't pick the ones that you just uh, profit like one or two or three dollars. Maybe try to uh, mark them up at least uh, for 30 or even 40 percent. Mm -hmm. it's, it's doable uh, when uh, dealing with AliExpress. I have to say that uh, for me, at least uh, as, uh, as a long time dropshipper, I only had like a very short period of time where I tried my best to deal with AliExpress and I had so many issues that I decided to actually uh, not to deal with AliExpress again. But maybe I think the days are changing and maybe the times are starting to become a little bit different and we should uh, reconsider that. But anyway, uh, the issues or the most of the issues that that I encountered with is of course finding like the good products that uh, that there are in AliExpress 
uh, mm -hmm. dealing with a long transaction. So when you deal with a US supplier, the transaction ends in like days. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, even a maximum of seven days. Yeah. And when you are dealing with AliExpress items, then usually the transaction takes longer. That means that you will probably get customer support issues that happened, let's say 20 or 30 days ago. That mm -hmm. means that you are probably in a, in a time frame where there is always a backlog of at least 20 days uh, between transaction to transaction. And if you have, if you want to scale uh, these things up and go to, a, let's say, 100 or 150 orders per day, that means that at least in a percentage, let's say 2 or 3% of them, let's say 100 orders per day, that means 3% of either return or either uh, an issue mm -hmm. and now you need to you need to deal with all the all the problems again and again yeah. uh, and it doesn't end uh, so that means that you need to become a very expert in customer support so in general I'm not against dropshipping from Aliexpress I just think that you should do one a very good uh, market research and find uh, good products that you can mark them up at least in 30 40 percent second uh, if you are dealing with aliexpress try to find uh, a very good uh, supplier. seller supplier seller that sells the items and and try to find items that it, they have a substitute so in case that the item is actually not in stock or there is an issue you can just per purchase the next one third be very good in customer support four uh, be very careful regarding your business policy make sure that you are dealing in with your business policies are very well mm -hmm. so i'm guessing this is like uh, the rules uh, yeah. let's say in general but uh, I'm, I'm always in exploring the, the next big things yeah okay so let's see the next one uh, okay hi guys what about stealth accounts and stealth pioneer so uh, do you want me to answer first or yeah you? go ahead um, I think the the whole uh, thing with uh, having multiple accounts uh, on eBay is uh, important like stealth or not stealth that's uh, your choice uh, I think uh, everybody makes their own choice and their own risks like uh, the main thing with stealth accounts is what happens when you have to do verification what happens when eBay asks for documents PayPal asks for documents that's uh, something that can catch you not ready sometimes and uh, you know if there's a lot of money uh, in your account that could be a problem there are solutions for that but also you know things take time take money and uh, it's again it's a choice that you make it is important i'll tell you for sure to have to spread your uh, eggs uh, so to speak so uh, ebay will arbitrarily close accounts or make some exposure uh, problems let's say i have one account i have several accounts and one of my accounts that does exactly as the other accounts uh, was flagged by ebay as doing drop shipping so it won't be able to be top rated and whatever so you can't uh, work consistently on one account without uh, having problems and this is not a way to run a business so yeah uh, definitely run several accounts um, there are solutions for splitting them we talked about it i think in the before previous uh, yeah i think in the know, first video the second one yeah we really uh, try we, we really went into details regarding uh do and don't do uh, mm -hmm. things regarding stealth account yeah and also with the pioneer uh, i don't know if you know but uh, you can open several uh, bank accounts virtual bank yeah. accounts on pioneer so let's say you have uh, five or three uh, stealth accounts on ebay you can definitely ask pioneer to open several uh, bank accounts for you so you can connect them without paypal knowing that oh it goes actually into the same pool so that's about that yeah, so I think that you covered like the risk issues, uh, mm -hmm. but I have to say that uh, unfortunately today the only way to uh, to grow your business is, is to have multiple accounts. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is a proper way to do that. And I think that every time this question uh, comes uh, more and more and becomes more and more important for guys. So just in uh, general, I have to say 
that uh, first of all, if you are thinking about stealth account, I think it's a good idea because in my opinion that first of all, don't fall in love with your eBay account because that means that probably uh, if there is an issue with your uh, eBay account, it doesn't matter if it's closed or if it's suspended, restricted or flagged or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that f don't fall in love, in love with, your, uh, with your eBay account. Same as I always say, don't fall in love with your products that you are selling. Us as dropshippers, we should always uh, think about ways to expand our business, to expand uh, uh, or to spread our risks. That means that we probably will need to have more than one account. And that means that we will probably need uh, to try and explore other places or, or new things. So in general, I'm uh, up to a stealth account. Uh, there is a proper way, but I think that we covered that a lot in, I think, the uh, first video. So let's, uh, let's leave it uh, like that as an open uh, question. Okay, uh, let's see. I use a trip. You want this? I, I think so. What's, what does it say? Okay, because before that he also had another question. Um, okay, let's say this one. Hi, I use AliExpress as supplier and my business is growing. Should I create LLC? Okay, so uh, many people are always asking regarding the, the way that they should uh, form the, I think their business or, or, uh, or the way that to conduct uh, their business either as a, as a US company or, or maybe a local company mm -hmm. or maybe a European company. It really depends on where I'm dealing with and yeah. how I'm dealing with. Now, creating an LLC has its obstacles. I'm always, uh, I, I truly believe that every region that you are dealing with and you want to do it professionally and you want to reduce fees and make your business more profitable, you should probably create uh, your own company in the local region. Yeah. This is why I'm dealing with a, a few companies in every region uh, that I have activity. I'm actually creating uh, my own company and, and I'm dealing with it uh, with, with the local company. So regarding the LLCs, so there is a few obstacles. Uh, the first one is not just creating an LLC. That's the easy part, the, the, the hardest part is to actually open a bank account. So in order to open a bank account, you should probably go, you should be physically uh, in the bank account and try to open it. I know that there are many, many services that offer you guys. Uh, physically to, in the branch. Physically in the branch, yeah. Mm. I know that there are many, many companies that are actually offering you without the need to just walk into the bank and open mm -hmm. a bank account. But I have to say it's not always a stable uh, solution. Now, when creating an LLC they will, or, or, or bank account, what they usually will uh, or probably ask you guys, they will probably ask you to have, um, to have uh, some kind of statement that proves uh, your billing address. And this is uh, sometimes uh, an issue. And second, um, I think that uh, if you want to have a very close relationship with your bank without the option that some, someone will probably shut down your bank account, this is actually can happen in the United States, you should, uh, you should probably walk into the branch. Now, if your business is growing and you are dealing with AliExpress or you are dealing with, uh, with another supplier, it doesn't matter where it is located, but actually you are selling inside the United States, then I think that uh, in my opinion, it's very important to have uh, or to create an LLC. Yeah. Also, when you open a PayPal account, then uh, in the United States, the fees are lower. So this is also something. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, different with uh, PayPal in the United States, because once you are Maybe opening, yeah, you will probably need a social security number in order to open um, um, a PayPal, a business PayPal in United States because they want a personal liability. And if you don't have a social security number, the second option is to have an ITIN, but it takes time, it takes like uh, at least uh, till your next uh, report 
when, mm-hmm. when you actually submit the report with uh, your accountant, then you can get um, your ITIN or request an ITIN. You should, mm-hmm. it, it usually takes somewhere in between eight to one and a half, uh, eight months to one and a half wow. uh, years mm-hmm. to have uh, an ITIN uh, already in your hand. Yeah. So, but again, it maybe this, tough. yeah, it tough. yeah. But again, if this is a really a growing business, and that you see that there's a lot of potential, and this one to two to three percent that you're saving by opening it in the United States is really a big sum of money for you down the line, then this is something definitely uh, that you can explore. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's see. There was another one. No, uh, I think it's below. Please, okay. Please. Uh, uh, I see. No, there was one before. Yeah, this one. And please, if you know if the problem with Walmart gift cards resolved. Uh, not yet. So unfortunately, I think that uh, this, at least as uh, as I expected, I think that uh, it's something that will only be resolved probably after Christmas time, probably in the beginning of next year. But at least for now, there is no resolution for uh, Walmart gift cards. Okay. So Asen asks, I see some people buy their products in order to rank higher. What do you think about it? Their own products. Their own products, yeah. yeah. So I've seen, I've seen many people uh, uh, that, that actually does that. So what they uh, normally do, they purchase some stairs account, they uh, start to upload some item and then they are purchasing it again and again and again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that this is not a good and, and scalable solution because again, in, 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 in my point of view, don't fall in love with your products then because it uh, might be like uh, the biggest hit today, but tomorrow it will be gone. Mm-hmm. So that means that uh, you have no control on that. If it's your own private label, then maybe it's a good some kind of an idea but it's not scalable i don't believe in in doing that and also i think that this is a pure loss of money so anyway mm. uh, i believe in businesses that makes money not losing money mm. yeah that's a good point mm, okay I, i'm thinking if i want to say something about it but i think you covered it uh you're welcome english mastiff uh <laughs> is that the name yeah cool okay so uh, I think we're about uh, to end because you have uh, other meetings uh, yeah. planned. So anything else you want to add? Yeah, so guys, uh, I have to say that uh, for you guys in Morocco that are watching this, uh, this live, um, I'm actually visiting uh, Morocco for business uh, in, in the next uh, few days. So feel free to reach out if you are in the area of uh, Marrakesh, uh, Casablanca or uh, Rabat. I will uh, probably be there in the next few days. And if you have uh, business opportunities or something that you want to say, feel uh, free to reach out. And and I'm hoping that the next live is is, is for Morocco. Uh, That would be exciting. Cool. Okay. So just, you know, the uh, last uh, question I just want to say. Um, uh, okay, so any idea for Amazon dropshipping, I mean to sell on Amazon, you should check out uh, Tai and Gwen's uh, material, he's uh, very good at that, he has also uh, did a webinar, surprise, surprise with us, uh, but uh, also he has his own YouTube channel where he has a lot of information regarding that. In one sentence, it's very hard to do dropshipping in, in Amazon. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, at least if, um, if I need to give you guys at least um, my point of view, just uh, send a few items to the FBA, mm-hmm. real items to the FBA. Try to uh, create some sale history and then after that uh, think about combining together with uh, dropshipping from Walmart into Amazon. Perfect. Okay, guys, so with that, we're going to end this live session. I want to thank everyone who is uh, watching and for the people who will watch it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned a lot. Uh, As always, uh, next week we'll have uh, the same. Uh, That time, uh, maybe even in Morocco with Mo. Yeah, and do some likes and share. And tell your friends to come and join us uh, to the group. As long as we are a big group, we will continue this and we will provide to you guys with all the questions everything 
uh, that you probably uh, need in order to conduct your uh, drop shipping business. So I think that this covers it. So as always, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Mark. Thank you guys. So see you in the next dropshipping news next week. Perfect. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.